Welcome to this post-game media edition of Talking Hoosier Baseball. Today is Saturday, March 23rd, 2024. Connor Foley pitched a seven-inning shutout gem on Saturday. While it took a little while to get going, the Hoosier offense came through as well. First baseman Joey Brancheski went two for four, made several tough catches at first base, and the Hoosiers won the game eight to one to even the series. The media met with Brancheski, Foley, and Mercer following the contest. So, so Joey, uh, just uh, how does it feel to be uh, on the re- for the team to kind of be on the right side of things today? You know, it feels great. We've been working all week um, in practice and everything, especially on our defense and defense, and it showed today, especially on the scoreboard. The career day for Connor. Do you guys kind of like sense him heating up in these kind of games? Oh yeah, really. Um, and it makes it easy on the defense when he's out there uh, just mowing guys down. So I'm really appreciative of that. Well, what was Connor like in the dugout in between innings? Uh, hyping everyone anything? up. He was hyping everyone up. Um, get bringing energy in the dugout. That's for sure. Is that energy? Same old, call, same old Connor. Does that energy kind of transpire over to the plate for you guys and be able to put up some runs for him? Oh, yeah. Yeah, whenever a pitcher's out there with bringing energy, it feels the offense. What was going through your head on that bunt that turned into two runs? Oh, that was great. Yeah, that was great. And uh, is it Burkle? Burkle laid down a bunt. Great bunt. Oh, yeah. So um, that brought energy in the dugout. A lot of loud and vocal fans today. What kind of impact does that bring to this team? Uh, a tremendous amount of impact. I mean... Uh, whenever the fans come out here and bring energy, it's really great for us, and we kind of feed off that. So, so the team seemed pretty locked in at the plate today. Uh, saw a lot of well well hit foul balls, trying to keep the keep the pitch counts up. Mm-hmm. Yeah, um, kind of our approach today. The wind was blowing in quite a bit, so we were just trying to stay low and middle in the field, and uh, and it paid off. Carter stealing home. What was what was your reaction to that? I mean, (laughs) you don't see that every day, so, I mean, it was cool to see. Connor, what can you talk about, uh, particularly fastball commands seem to be really good and you seem to be very effective with your fastball today. Yeah, I mean, we we worked out a lot lot on that this week, just getting in, getting away, Uh, because when we got B, we got B in the middle, just as everyone does, so we really worked on command, kind of commanding both sides of the plate and then mixing it up as well, and it obviously worked today, so... We're going to continue doing that. I think it's obvious what maybe a performance like this does for the team, but what does it do for you What when you kind of look back on this? How do you think this can maybe carry you going forward? Yeah, I mean, it sets a good example, uh, and hopefully we can just hit the hit the ground running uh, now with a little momentum. So uh, we're going to staff it tomorrow, see what we can do, but hopefully have a similar outcome. You had a career high in strikeout, so after that 10th, I guess, what's going through your head? What's the motion like? Yeah, I was pretty fired up. That was after the 7th, I think. Or, yeah, I think it was my last one. And, Pretty, I was pretty fired up. That was awesome. Did you kind of know going into that inning that that was going to be your last one? I didn't. I didn't really know what my pitch count was, but I after the uh, or after I came back in, I saw I was at like just a little bit over 100. So I figured that I'd be done. And that was. So. I think you've been building up now, and I think the 103 pitches was a career high as well. Obviously, this being your first year in the starter role, just being able to get that kind of linked out of your right arm, what does that do for you? Yeah, it's awesome. I mean, it all starts with the trust that these guys have me in the dugout. Uh, Teammates and coaches both uh, to allow me to go out there and keep going after, like, to the sixth and the seventh. Like, you know, you could easily put another guy in, like a lefty, give him a different view the third time through or fourth maybe. But uh, kind of stuck with me, and I'm glad they did. Joey said that you were still hyping up your teammates while you were, uh, when you were still on the mound, you're on the bench for the team's hitting. Is that something you always do, or is it just you're just so locked in today? Yeah, I, I, I always try to be there for my guys, whether it's a good or bad outing. I mean. If we're winning, I mean, that's, that's the main goal, so we did that. Anything else for Tully? So is this uh, something that you can keep right now? Yeah, I think I, I think I got a little respect, maybe a little bit. So maybe they'll back off, but I ain't shaving it regardless. <laughs> <laughs> uh, physically, you know, not starting many games last year, if any. How are you feeling after that, arm-wise? Yeah, I mean, I'm sore. I'm going to be sore. It's just, just part of it. Throwing 103 pitches isn't... You know, going to feel good the next day, but you just got to recover. Recovery starts now for next Saturday, so just got to get at it, get the trainer, get with the trainer, do some post throw, and I'll be good to go. If they need anything tomorrow, you think you're good to go? Uh, uh, uh. <laughs> no, no. I'm, I'm shot. What if they need that bat? I'll give them that. <laughs> give them that. Perfect. Thank you, Connor. Yeah, yeah. thank you, guys. Yeah.
Uh, so, Coach, you basically, uh, obviously, you, you finally kind of hit that goal of, of, of run uh, prevention here today really, really well, obviously, yeah, with what yeah. Connor produced. Yeah. So just kind of what does, what does that mean in general for the team right now? Yeah, you know, just being able to have a little bit of confidence, a little bit of wind in your sails is a, is a big thing. And, you know, we, we played really good defense today, too. We made some made some big plays behind them. Tyler certainly made just a couple of great plays. And that diving catch from, uh, from Carter there in, in the middle innings when it was still tight, you know, I think that gives guys confidence. But you, know, you can even see Reisdorf from his first inning to his second inning when he's able to really step on it, get the fastball to both sides of the plate and pitch. You just – you, you got to pitch. And, and I thought – this was obviously Connor's best game um, at, at Indiana. But he, he pitched. He mixed. He got to both sides. He called fastball in. He shoved it in. He called away. He threw it away. Uh, you know, landed off-speed pitch in any count. And he really went more almost like a third, right? You, 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 a third – uh, of, of, of each one of his three pitches, and, and you can see the whole plate opens up to him. And so that's a big thing is, is giving guys a pathway, showing guys the way um, that, that you're capable of having success on the mound. And, and you know, like I, I told you guys, I'm, I'm aware we got sideways with the schedule, and so there's some of those games that get super ugly, but we've done that this year. We've pitched. We've executed pitches. We've, we've gotten out. So we've, we've pitched well against good teams. And so we can do it again. I just sometimes, kind of your point, sometimes you just need somebody to go lead the way and show that, hey, this is doable. We can do this again. Done before, we can do it again. And let's go execute. Let's go compete. Uh, you can't pitch tentatively, and, and you got to go give your best stuff. So uh, it was a really good example of that from Connor. He was obviously terrific, and he's very talented. But I thought the biggest example of that was Reisdorf from his eighth inning to his ninth inning. The difference in the pitchability of getting to both sides and executing pitches uh, I really showed. That's like I told Ryan. You, you, you could have gone five innings right there. You, you would have rolled for five innings like that. Um, and I think that's that's the lesson to learn from those guys. And um, you know, we've had confidence in them, and so they have to have the confidence and the, the intrinsic belief to know they're they're capable of doing that. Even though sometimes things haven't gone as well as we would like, we, we can do it again. And today was hopefully the first step in, in that direction. Obviously, this being a kind of a, a big catalyst for team success, Connor, what Connor did today, but everything that goes into it for him this year, this being his first year in a starting role, it's conference play, getting that kind of outing from him, what do you think that can kind of do for him going forward personally? Well, I, I, you're, you're exactly right there. I think it shows him the path of his capabilities, not just relying solely on his ability and his talent, which is off the charts, right? We, we know that. Um, but it really for him, but for the whole team is just – you have to you have to play the game the way the game requires it, and sometimes when you're talented and him he's learning. But across the board in the game, sometimes we we want to play the game the way that we want to play it, <clears throat> and that's not that's not conducive for success long term. You have to be able to, to look at your opponent and say what do they do poorly, how does that match my strengths, and then go out and execute against their weaknesses. And so for him, I think it gives him the confidence to know that. I can throw any pitch in the count. I can I can go fastball in without hitting the guy in the ribs. I, I can go fastball away without cutting it. I can I can execute fastball in late with two strikes. And and that really I was kinda of tell the hitters that messes up all the pots and pans, right? When you can go in late with a fastball, especially his fastball, uh, it, it, it it blows guys up, right? Because now they're they're supposed to be out over the plate, they're supposed to be soft and away, and you land a heater in like that, uh, and, and execute it. I love the fact they threw an 0-2 fastball over our guy's head. You know, there's a little bit of there's a little bit of crazy in that, right? And and so you got to show guys you're willing to come in, and you got to show guys you can't be comfortable on the plate. I think guys have been too comfortable on the plate with us in general, and and we got to be able to own the inner half of the plate when we need to. So for him, I think it shows a path of being pitchable, not just being the big talented guy that throws hard, but being pitchable, getting into the sixth and seventh. He did have one inning where he gets two quick outs and then he goes a walk and then he goes, uh, you know, a, a five or six pitch at bat into the, the next guy. We, we, we wasted 10 pitches there. And so we're, we're doing less and less of that. But we have to eliminate those. To be a starter, to be an ace, to be a guy that can give us the length like Sonar did last year, when the inning's over, it's over. You, you don't give a guy breathing room. You don't waste 10 pitches. You don't you don't lose focus. And so he's doing a much better job of that. I think it gives him a lot of, a lot of confidence, a lot of belief. And, and then to Carl's point is, Hopefully it shows the way for some other guys to go in there and execute like that as well, um, and 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 to be able to give us a little bit of a little bit of uh, legs here as we go. Hopefully get going a little bit.
Connor alluded to kind of a staff day tomorrow. Sure. How important was it to only have two pitchers going today after using five or six yesterday? Yeah, it's a big deal. It's a big deal. You know, they don't they don't have a starter uh, name yet, and so they're kind of in the same position. So, you know, I told the guys it's going to be a dogfight. You know, we're going to have to mix and match and get in and get out and the next few pitches turn double plays and, and and go get some balls in the gaps. And so, to save guys is, is a big deal. You know, it kind of we talked about it last night. We got a couple guys up in the bullpen today, which I, I hate to do because you. You're throwing pitches in the pin. Those are those are real pitches. They all count, and, and that's all wear and tear. So, hopefully, those guys will be able to get back up tomorrow and, and go execute for us. But no, it's a big deal when you start to have some length in your starters and establish some guys that can can go a little bit. Man, oh man, that makes the game one heck of a lot smoother. And, um, you, you can, and then as a coach, you can start to manage better. You can start to change. The, you can impact the game differently when you, when you get some of those out of them. So it does. It helps a ton. Coach, handful of stolen bases here today. Was stealing home in the game plan? <laughs> you know, I, I it, it is when you when you have a lefty that's that's that not paying attention, and you know, it, I told the guys we would. I told them my first year at Indiana. I think we led the country in homers. We also led the country in strikeouts. I didn't I didn't like that a whole lot, and so we wanted to be athletic. We want to be fast. We want to push the tempo, but we we have to follow the plan offensively because we have to have some runners, and when we do that. You know, we ran a hit and run successfully today. We had a had a had a, had a sack that they threw away. We had a safety, we had a double steal, we stole home. It's like guys, if we can execute the offensive philosophy and playing better, which we haven't done a great job of, honestly, since the first couple of weeks, of being able to go one through nine, establish a, an identity and stick to the plan and not have stoppers, not have guys get off off playing on us, then then we can we can use our athleticism. That's what we're built to do. We should be fast enough. I'm an athletic enough to, to not strike out, to put the ball in play, and to run, and to really cause a lot of pressure. We were, we were, we were tough to manage there the last three or four innings. We were really tough to get a hold of, um, and it's and it's kind of the point to those guys is we got to have base runners. We have to bear with two strikes. We have to follow the plan better. We, we pull off balls too much. We don't have the ball the other way, and and when you do that, you just don't give yourself an avenue to get rolling and allow your athleticism to play. So, stealing home is always in the plan. If if you get a guy that's uh, they, had, they had left it last night. We talked about it. He was uh, with Pine. Was it last night or today? It was last night. They left it yesterday. No, today. They left it, started the game today. Uh, just a quick to his glove and quick to the plate. So it was not really an avenue for us to go. We had bases loaded and Carter was up. Um, and, and so we couldn't do it then. But as soon as as soon as soon that, you know, the guy was a 1-6 to the plate from second base, so we knew we could double steal. Uh, and then if he's going to be that slow coming together, we can steal home. Once we get the two strikes, that's that's always an option for us shooting less than two strikes if they're going to give it to us like that. So I, I, that's how the offense is built. It should be capable of doing that. And we have to do a good enough job offensively. And this isn't about me, but I, I can help. If we do the things offensively we're capable of doing, we put ourselves in those positions, we're built to run like that. We're built to play like that. Uh, and then I can start to take the – I can start to put my hands on the game a little bit and try to help. Don't try to do too much, but – at the same time, when it's given to you, we, we've got to be able to take it. Um, and so the last three or four innings, that's how we've practiced to play. That's how we're designed to play. That's how we're built to play. And so we just did enough there where we could uh, uh, put us in the positions to be able to be successful and do those things. So if we can continue to do that, and and, and we'll, what it does is it gives your, your pitcher a little bit of confidence. You know, we start doing that early. We score two or three and three or four. We're up four or five runs. And, and you just give your pitcher a heck of a lot more confidence to be able to go if you'll if you'll just start to run away from guys, cause chaos and cause stress, and um, would would uh, ideally like like to do a lot more of those kind of things. You seem to be extending some at bats today uh, with uh, with a lot of foul balls. Yeah, would you say that's kind of an intentional? Yeah, it's like I, I honestly I think we've been pretty poor with, in those situations. You know, we we get away from the two strike approach. You know, we get we get trigger happy, we get pull happy, we take fastballs away for strike three. And in and, all frankness, it's it's nonsense, and we've talked about it a ton. And it just okay, I know we've given up some runs early, and, and I know we've given up runs in bunches and those things, but that that doesn't you know allow you to abdicate your responsibility of, of going in and having competitive at bat. Uh, what you do on a Friday uh, offensively echoes for the entire weekend. We had an opportunity last night to get deeper into their pen, and we didn't do that. Well, that's going to come out tomorrow, and so. We have got to we have got to be mature enough to stay on plan and on target because if we don't, it doesn't matter what the pitching does. You, you score one run a game, you, you lose two to one, you lose you lose uh, uh, ten to one. What 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 the hell's the difference, right? Either way, it's a loss. 
So we offensively have got to do our job of staying to the plane and staying on target to be able to, to hopefully give us a little bit of length. And again, at several of those games, you look at the first game against Belmont, you look at the first game against Troy, that's not that's not a pitching loss, that's an offensive loss. We run Ty out there too late because we don't do anything offensively. We refuse to hit sinkers the other way. And then so now you're overextending a guy that uh, that shouldn't be out there. We should be able to go to Rise Door for a closer or someone else, but you can't because you're not doing the things offensively you're supposed to do. And those, those things stack up, right? Those innings stack up on Ty over the course of the season. And, you, and you're going to see that if you don't take care of it, um, then you're going you're going to end up getting a guy where he's even worn down. So. Uh, we have to do a better job offensively, and we did that today. The second half of the game, I didn't think we were great. The first half, um, kind of, kind of the, the kind of the same story that we've been doing. In the second half was how we we were designed to play. Um, but you've been through it. We've been through the tough stuff, and hopefully, on the backside of this, um, you learn a lot of valuable lessons, and you come out of this thing tougher and stronger. And the lessons that you learn are then uh, solidified. You know, sometimes when coach says. You know, in practice, is hollering and yelling and stuff. It's it's like, yeah, coach is just being a jerk, and he's just a big man and he doesn't like me. Uh, but when you go and play in the game, and it's like, no, you you get your butt kicked because of those things. It becomes a little bit more appropriate to like st- stay on playing. So, I- I'm really proud of the way that we fought today, and really proud of the way we responded today. Um, and in and, and that's a tough thing to do. It is. It's a tough thing to do, especially you, you feel like you pitch really well. You have one big inning last night. And you feel like you play really good defense and. And, and you come out today and you, and you get a great start and then you get a little bit of positive energy, a little bit of momentum with it. Well, I guess I'm not a huge fan of the, of the word momentum, but, you know, enthusiasm is a real thing. And so we have to compete that way. And if we'll do, then we'll be fine. Real quick, you're kind of just alluding to the difference between getting to pitch with the lead versus pitching from behind. What kind of freedom does a, uh, an outing like today, being able to pitch behind that offense, what does that do for you guys? Well, it's, it's a huge deal. It's a huge deal. You, you have a couple of shutdown innings. We should have done more offensively in the first three or four innings. And that and that's that's my responsibility. That's our responsibility as an offense to do more than we did. Uh, <clears throat> but then all of a sudden, you know, Connor gets going there. In the fifth or sixth inning, Connor was spectacular. You can, you can tell when you got it, when you got a real guy, he gets in the fifth or sixth inning in a close game and, and he smells it. He puts his foot down and I think he punched a couple of guys out there in the fifth or sixth and comes charging off the mound. and. That that energy and that enthusiasm is 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 uh, contagious, and so then you feel it in the dugout, and and all of a sudden it's like, hey, we all talk about we want pitching and we want to start and we want, you know, well we've done that, we've had opportunities and we haven't done it offensively. Like I said, first game against Belmont, first game against Troy today, you know, last night until the the seventh inning we had opportunities, and you know, offensively we didn't do our job, and so that guy comes in and like a you know like like Tarzan all fired up and. Then you start to you start to have better at bats, and you have a responsibility back and forth to each other. So, and then you kind of get it going offensively, and, and you open it up and go. But it's a two way street. It's we we can all sit here and point pitchers or point fingers at the pitching, and I get it, especially the week where we were really sideways. I get it, but that that it hasn't been just on the pitching. It's the inability for for us to do what we're supposed to do offensively, follow plan, and then the inability for us as coaches to to put guys in the right spots. You just don't what. You don't know how to how to impact the game. You don't know where to go to because you're always worried about the back end of weekends and Tuesday and all this different stuff. And if offensively we just get out and play the way we're capable of playing, it's a hell of a lot easier to manage a game. And so that's what we need to do. And, and, and I'm, I'm confident that we're capable. And hopefully today is kind of the you know the the energizer that gets us going again and, and play the way we're capable of playing. And, and I, I, at some point we're going to do it. At some point we're going to go on a run. At some point, we're going to play really good baseball. I'm 100% confident of it, and hopefully today is the first day of that. Indiana and Illinois will play a rubber match at Bart Kaufman Field on Sunday at 1 p.m. See you at the Bart.